Oh my gosh, you guys. I cannot believe it. It's finally the day. The day that I take on the Ravensburger Crypt Puzzle. Yes, it's true. I'm finally doing this puzzle. A bunch of you have asked me to try it. And not only did I film the entire puzzling process, but I also vlogged my way through it. So you'll be able to see exactly what you're getting yourself into if you try to do this. And I'm not gonna lie to you, this puzzle might very well be my very own crypto night. <laughs> okay, I had to say it once. Let's move on. So if you have no idea what I'm talking about, the Ravensburger Crypt Puzzle is all one color. They make it in gold, black, and silver, and I'm going to be doing the silver one today. And if you're new here, I actually already did a review video about Ravensburger puzzles. So if you just want a general overview of them, you can go watch that. In this video, I'm going to be talking specifically about what's unique about the Crypt Puzzle. So let's take a look. The box comes shrink-wrapped, and then it's pretty similar to any other Ravensburger box, except that it has a weird piece count, uh, 654. Also, it has the Crypt branding on it, so it has a graphic on the front kind of illustrating the puzzle rather than just a flat image of what's on the puzzle because it's a solid color, so that wouldn't really work. <laughs> However, on the sides and on the back, they have an image that shows the piece cuts and shows the unique design of the puzzle cut. The puzzle is about the same size as many other Ravensburger puzzles. It's about 20 by 27 inches. On the back, there is a little blurb about the puzzle, and they say that no two pieces are alike, which is good because if they were, that would get very confusing. So I'm going to be doing this puzzle on a dark background so that it's a little easier to see the pieces. And honestly, I need all the help I can get on this one. If we open it up, the pieces come in a sealed bag, which you have to cut open. There's also the standard brochure about Ravensburger puzzles. And then this is very mysterious. There is a sealed envelope inside and it says puzzle guide. Inside is a piece of paper with all of the outlines of all of the pieces. So basically an answer key for what type of piece goes into each spot. I feel like putting that into a sealed envelope is a little overkill, especially since you can already see that same outline on the back of the box, but you know, it's a fun little touch. So if we look at the pieces, they feel like standard Ravensburger quality. They have the signature blue cardboard on the back. It is a little intimidating looking at so many pieces with no design at all on them, but they're really good quality. And I actually found that with bigger pieces like this, the thickness of the cardboard made them so satisfying to snap together. The silver is pretty shiny. It's not glossy, but it has a strong sheen to it, which is fine because you don't really have to worry about light reflection on this puzzle since there isn't anything for the light to uh, like cover up if it's reflecting off the pieces. So, okay, now that I've shown you all of the different characteristics of the puzzle, Let's actually do it. Let's watch my slow descent into madness when I try to do this entire thing in one afternoon, which was a mistake. <laughs> All right, roll the footage. <laughs> All right, guys, it is about 10.50 a.m. I'm about to start the Ravensburger Crypt Puzzle. I'm a little nervous. I uh, just did the shots of like opening up the box, looking at the pieces. I guess I maybe thought it would be a little easier than it's looking. There's literally nothing on the pieces besides the one color, which I knew going into it, but like looking at it in real life now, I'm it's it looks very difficult. So I just finished sorting all of the pieces 
I have the edges, I have the center swirl, like spiral pieces, and then all of the other pieces. Something I found interesting is that the corner pieces, check that out, they're so big, it's like four pieces in one. Okay, so I just finished the edge. That took quite a while, but once I figured out that all of these double pieces went together in the corners, it went a little faster. I have decided that I am going to have the back of the box there for me to look at because I would have done that a lot more quickly if I had realized that all of these went together. So in the, um, in the interest of not filming for like 12 hours, I'm gonna glance at what the pattern actually looks like as I work. So I'm about an hour and a half into it. I have done the edge, I've done this center spiral. This was definitely the easiest part because these pieces are pretty unique. Now I just have a whole lot of pretty similar looking pieces, so it's going pretty slowly. I probably have to start sorting through these pieces as well. My gosh, this puzzle is very high difficulty. I wasn't actually sure if it would be, but yes, I can confirm. It's very, very hard. So I'm not gonna lie, I'm going a little crazy. I was thinking about it, and I think the feet video is still the worst thing I've ever done, but I think this puzzle might be the second worst thing I've ever done. So I have sorted out all of the pieces. Um, up here I have these double pieces, which are kind of tripping me up because, you know, they're all different, but you can't really sort them out into these. But anyway, then we have these guys, these guys, these guys. We have this one and we have these and these. I really should give the piece types different names, but I don't have names for them. So I hope you can see what I'm pointing at. These are pieces that I pulled out that I think go into the spiral that I hadn't pulled out the first time. All right, guys, I've officially been working on this for about three hours. I would say I'm probably a third of the way done, maybe. I have definitely um, been looking at the back of the box and the cut of the puzzle a little bit more lately just because I can't, I can't sit here all day. I just can't do it. I need a few hints every so often as I go. All right, well, I was looking at the box quite a lot, but I managed to get the circle finished. Also, I just want to officially say, I think this takes the place. I think it beats out the feet video. I think this is the worst thing I've ever done. I hate this so much. I'm so bored. <laughs> All right, guys, this is where we're at. I think I have to call it a day. I just, I can't do it anymore. I can't stare at these pieces anymore. I'm like, I'm hot. I'm sweaty. This feels like a real endurance exercise. I think if I was just doing it like for fun, it would be more fun, but trying to do it for the camera is um, kind of taking a lot out of me. So I'm just gonna call it a day for today. I just, I can't, I can't do it anymore. I'm sorry, I love puzzles. I just don't like this one. <laughs> okay, it is the next day. It is about, what time is it, 9.30? 9.30 in the morning. I have a friend coming over at 12.30 for brunch, so I have three hours to get this thing done. So here's my theory. I think that the closer I get to the end, the faster it'll go. So I think I should be able to get it done in another three hours. Wish me luck. I have decided to kind of cheat and pull out the answer key just because, you know, since I'm filming this, I cannot be sitting here for another like six hours. So I'm just gonna look at the shape of the piece and then I can you know, figure out what shape of a piece goes in each spot and then I can find it here and then try all of those shapes until I find each piece. And that's my strategy. I don't care anymore. I just need to get this done. You can see that I, I put in all of the special pieces. So all that we have left are these, which kind of all look exactly the same. So I basically just have to try them one by one, hope all of the pieces are there. I'm on the home stretch now. I got this. I got this. I'm almost done. Oh my god! The last two pieces. That's one. Oh, I didn't even get that on camera. All right, here we go. Two. Oh my gosh. That's it. I'm done. I did it. That was an ordeal. Oh my gosh. I don't know if I'm ever gonna do that again. That was a lot. But, you know, I did it, I got through it. I kind of cheated a little, I used the answer key, but oh boy, that one is very tough. <laughs> So, as you can see, 
And to answer the question in the title, yes, this puzzle is very, very, very difficult. The actual puzzling time for me, not counting the vlogging in between and taking breaks to rest my eyes, it was about a little over five hours of just solid puzzling. As I mentioned, I think I would have enjoyed it more if I was just doing it for fun and if I could have you know, just done a few pieces here and there over the course of a week or two, rather than trying to get through the entire thing in an afternoon. It actually gave me even more of a headache than the vibrating colors puzzle did, because I was constantly looking back and forth between the answer key and the pieces, and that just made my eyes so tired. Thinking about it now, maybe I should have colored in the pieces in the answer key as I put them in and then it would have been easier to see where I was on the puzzle. But I'll be real, when doing a puzzle like this, my entire philosophy is that if you're going to do a puzzle like this, you should do a puzzle like this. And that's why at the beginning I tried not to use the answer key or look at the outline of the pieces on the back of the box. However, since I was filming it and I didn't want to end up with like 12, 14 hours of footage, I did cheat a little and look at the answer keys, which definitely helped me move forward towards the like the middle section of the puzzle when I just had so many pieces left and I was getting stuck. Um, I like that they give you the answer key so that you have that as an option if you are stuck. However, I do kind of wish that I had done it without the answer key since I think that would have been more of an accomplishment. But I mean, I've done it once. I really don't think I'm going to be doing it again. So if you did it without the answer key, you can just know in your heart that you are a better puzzler than I am. So in terms of the quality of the puzzle, there were a few times where I did have a piece in the wrong spot. But uh, like I've mentioned in other videos, that's partly because I can't lean all the way over the puzzle without my head blocking the shot. So sometimes I can't really see you know, if a piece doesn't quite fit, especially if it's towards the far end of the puzzle. But for the most part, I think they did a really good job of making each piece unique and making sure there was a big variety of different types of pieces, since that's really all that you have to go on when putting this puzzle together. If you do do this puzzle, I would 100% recommend sorting out the pieces by shape, that's really the only strategy that you can use to be able to move forward on it and find the pieces that would fit in any particular spot. And even if you don't use the answer key all the way through, I think you should study it a little bit before you get started. I mean, it depends on what you want to do with this puzzle. If you want to go in totally blind, that would be a huge, massive challenge. But if you want to feel like you're making progress from the beginning, maybe just look at where the different types of pieces go, and then you might move forward at the beginning a little bit more quickly than I did. So, should you get this puzzle? Yes, if you like really tedious puzzles where you're trying piece after piece in the same spot. I know I'm saying that like it's a bad thing because it's not my personal favorite type of puzzle, but some people do really like that type of puzzle. You could get it if you have a really long audiobook or podcast to get through and you want a puzzle that's going to take a really long time to keep your hands busy. Or if you feel like most standard puzzles are too easy for you, this one is very difficult, so you will have a real sense of accomplishment when you finish it. But if you prefer your puzzles to be brightly colored and have enough different elements going on that you feel like you're always moving forward and not getting stuck, this might not be the puzzle for you. Though I will say, even though it is personally not the type of puzzle that I would want to go for, if you look at it from the side and you kind of have the sheen of the pieces, it is one of the most beautiful puzzles I've ever seen. I just think it looks so gorgeous seeing all of the pieced shapes without any picture on it to like distract from uh, the shapes of the pieces. I took so many photos, it's so nice. <laughs> oh, another reason why you might want to do this puzzle, maybe you are training for a jigsaw puzzle competition. Maybe you're really trying to be an elite puzzler. 
This is a great one to help train your eye for what types of pieces you want to look for. In the same way that some of the rainbow gradient puzzles that I've done on here kind of train your color perception abilities. This one has no color, but um, it trains your eye to look at the different types of puzzle piece shapes and be able to identify what, like which one would go in each spot. So I personally don't think that I'll ever be doing this one again. I mean, you saw in my area wear review that when the puzzle got to the point where all of the pieces were the same color, I didn't even finish it. But if you know what you're getting into and you think that you'll like it, then go for it. We can all like different things. I know that there have been a bunch of people in the comments when um, on Instagram when I posted that I was doing this who are, who are talking about how much they love it, which I think is great. I love that there are different puzzles out there for everyone's different uh, preferences. But you know, something else that I was thinking about if you wanted to paint your own custom puzzle, like I've done in videos before, doing it on this puzzle would save you the step of having to spray paint the original picture off of the puzzle. You would only have to do this once, and then you could paint on it, and then every time you do it from there on would be so much easier. I'm probably horrifying everybody who loves this for what it is as being one solid color, but that is not a bad idea. Maybe I'll have to put this back together just to try that. <laughs> anyway, if you do want to do this puzzle, it is very easy to get your hands on. It is on Amazon Prime in all three colors for about $20. I think that's a totally fair price for a unique high quality puzzle like this. So I'm going to put the link right down below if you want to get it for yourself. So I would love to know in a comment if you've ever done this puzzle or any of the other similar single color puzzles that are out there. Is this your type of puzzle or do you think you'll stay away and stick to more standard types of puzzles? Oh, the code word for the comments. Okay, the code word for the comments is going to be silver. Now you know, you have to watch until the end of the video to find out. That's it from me. I'm never doing this puzzle again. I'll see you all next time.